Namaste. So till now you thought that you have to manage the world outside. And now you have realized that you have to manage the world inside also, right? And, <laughs> and as you go on, you will find that this world inside seems to be much bigger than the world outside. Right? And many times more complicated than the world outside, you know. So when you go on investigating, you will find that there are layers and layers going on inside. <coughs> and we have to investigate into all of them. Isn't it? We are being introduced to ourselves. <laughs> eh? Yeah, now you have to discover yourself, but you are being introduced to yourself to begin with, isn't it? So, explore, investigate into yourself, see what is happening, and then it is saying every moment, right? So you have to be aware of yourself every moment. You have to keep exploring yourself every moment. You may feel that if I have to explore myself every moment, when will I have the time to look at the world outside? Right? Yeah. We will see. When you are looking at the world outside, who is looking at the world outside? Myself. Myself. Isn't it? So even when I am looking outside, I must look inside first and make sure that I am looking at it in a proper manner. Right? If there is something wrong with me and in my way of looking at it, then what I will see outside will not be right. So even when I am interacting with the world outside, I must first explore within myself. Make sure that things are in order within. Then only I can see things outside in a correct manner. So all that we will see as we go on. Okay. So we will work with exercise 1. Uh, till tomorrow. In fact, the whole, uh, you know, uh, investigation that we are going to do now onward is basically looking within, you know. Yesterday we were talking about self and body and then we are trying to look little deeper into the self, into B2, B1 and so on. All this is trying to look within, trying to observe our own self, find out what is there, right? Is it something worth or not worth? Is it leading, leading to harmony and happiness? Is it leading to disharmony and unhappiness, right? So all those things now we can directly observe ourselves. So it is not talking about somebody else. It is talking about you. So all that is being talked about here, now you can start observing directly within your own self. That is the idea of this exercise, okay? Isn't it? When we are talking about yourself, you should be able to see, right, it directly and cross check whether what is being said here is correct or not correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, the only thing I want to add in this is that in all this process, which was also mentioned, but I will reiterate that when you are doing this observation, Make sure that you are not reacting. There is no reaction. Whatever is there, I am observing it. Whatever is there, I am evaluating it. Right? But I am not reacting to it. Just observing it, evaluating it, and that is it. No reaction. So every moment I am aware of myself, Every moment I am observing myself, 
but I am not reacting to whatever is there inside. I am just observing and evaluating and that's it. That itself is enough. Okay. Yeah. So with this background, I can move to uh, lecture number six. And you have to continue working, right? So we tried for 10 minutes, but now you continue the whole day, day and night, till tomorrow morning. Okay. If there are questions, we will take them up. Or if you suddenly get a question, you know, the daytime you can ask, because that is a very significant thing to do. With our discussion, now we want to talk about the basic human aspiration which is basically continuous happiness and its fulfillment. Okay. So we want to look into our basic human aspiration and when we look into ourselves, we find that the basic human aspiration is continuous happiness and we can also understand what is the way to fulfill this aspiration. So that is what we will talk about. So we talked about this in USB 2. So these are some of the observations. In the light of investigation made so far, we can now see that basic human aspiration is for continuity of happiness. The aspiration for the feeling of prosperity is part of this continuity of happiness. So if you want to ensure continuity of happiness, prosperity is a part and parcel of it. Right? And we want continuity of happiness, that is very clear. Each one of you can verify for yourself. Whether you want continuity of happiness or you don't want continuity of happiness. Yes. This continuity of happiness is fulfilled by ensuring right understanding, right feeling and right thought in the self. This is very important. Okay. If I want to be in a state of harmony and happiness within, then all that I need to do is to ensure that I have the right understanding, I have the right feeling and the right thought. You can now see that if you have a wrong feeling even for a moment, what happens? Are you comfortable within, uncomfortable within? Uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Happy or unhappy? Uncomfortable. Unhappy. Right? In harmony or in contradiction? contradiction? So it is this feeling which is making you happy or unhappy. If you don't understand something, you feel confused, right? When you feel confused, are you happy, unhappy? Unhappy. unhappy. So all your happiness and unhappiness has to do with your understanding or lack of it, your right feeling or wrong feeling, right thought or wrong thought, the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition, feeling of harmony or feeling of disharmony, contradiction feeling of coexistence or feeling of struggle. Whatever be the situation outside, what matters to you is your feeling. What matters to you is your understanding. So we keep taking that example that if you are sitting in an air conditioned room like this, right? as far as your body is com concerned, it is comfortable for the body. But if you are sitting with someone with whom you have a feeling of opposition, what is your state of being? Are you happy, unhappy? Unhappy, yes. Any amount of air conditioning, can, you reduce, can it reduce your happiness, unhappiness? What do you think? No. Make it 10 degree, you know, and you will be happy. Is that so? No. So your state of being, 
that is the state of the being of the self is what deciding your happiness or unhappiness so this continuity of happiness which is your basic aspiration is fulfilled by ensuring right understanding in the self right feeling and right thought in the self we will investigate further as we go on this these things this right feeling and right thought is what is called as resolution i am resolved within if i have the right feeling and right thought if i do not have the right feeling and right thought then i am unresolved or i am confused i am in you know uh, doubt within <coughs> resolution in all aspects of our living calls for clarity about these different aspects of our living living in this self with the body in relationship with human being and the rest of nature with this background we can now deduce the following conclusion so i say i am resolved when i know <coughs> how to live in all aspects right so i have the clarity about all aspects of my living which includes living in this self with the body in relationship with other human being in relationship with the nature with the entire existence <coughs> so if i can see and understand all this how to live within myself with the body in relation to other human being in relation to the rest of existence ultimately the whole existence right then i am resolved within otherwise i am confused <coughs> so if you put all this together this is what we are trying to say human desire is continuous happiness and this continuous happiness is the need of the self can you see this who wants to be happy self or body self okay this continuous happiness is ensured by right understanding right feeling and right thought this right understanding will take place where in the self or in the body in the self this right feeling right thought will take place in the self or in the body self so you can see this continuous happiness which is the basic human aspiration is the need of the self and it is fulfilled by right understanding right feeling and right thought which are the activities of the self so need is of the self and it is fulfilled by the activities which are of the self so how much is the dependence on the body in all these cases the body is used as an instrument the body is used as an instrument to understand to express my right feeling express my thought i am using the body as an instrument but this need is of my self and it is fulfilled by myself by way of having right understanding right feeling and right thought yeah think over it and if there is any question let us see and we are saying that this right feeling and right thought is a state of resolved mind okay you are resolved if there is right feeling and right thought that is what is called as resolution yeah any question on this sir uh, i would like you to tell your name you know it will be easy for me to recall you yes what is your name i am uh, santana lakshmi sir yeah sir i just wants to clarify one doubt here which is not uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, mentioned so far 
or uh, it is uh, somewhere hidden so which is uh, myself not viewing clearly so the part is uh, i observed the process what you are mentioning right now it is seeing feeling understanding so this is what i am just understanding right now but uh, in this particular row uh, one particular word is missing i guess please correct me if i'm wrong uh, when i'm seeing when i'm feeling when i'm taking right i mean uh, right understanding but what is the role of perception when i'm seeing i perceive something then i feeling something then i understanding something so the perception is connecting factor of seeing or feeling or it is a uh, i mean inbuilt thing of feeling when you see something you already have some perspective you know with which you are seeing now what is the meaning of that perspective i guess which is uh, i have already experienced already and i just uh, came across already so having the same thought of feeling i i'm just trying to apply it on over on it yeah so let me clarify what it means is that i already have some assumption about that particular thing which i am observing exactly right so if you look at that exercise that we were talking i said when i am observing something and i am deciding my feeling on it how do i decide it there are two possibility number one is that i am deciding on the basis of my assumption about that particular thing right but this assumption may be based on right understanding or it may not be based on right understanding yes right there that is there the problem is that if it is based on right understanding then my perception or perspective will be right and i will be able to decide for the right feeling regarding that object if my perception is based on assumption which is not based on right understanding then i am likely to get into trouble so one self uh, should have a ability to validate that that as uh, this kind of assumption or perception is really uh, required to perceive such feeling or not am i right sir yeah so this perception which is based on that assumption i have to make sure that that assumption is based on right understanding and therefore i need to have the right understanding first then on the basis of that if i am perceiving i will have the right perception and based on that perception i will have the right feeling so can we In have the map like this sir so have a uh, i mean uh, seeing perceiving feeling and understanding yeah i will in fact explain all those things you know first thing is the right understanding yes on the basis of right understanding we will have the wisdom right so yes. if i understand this whole existence including myself then i will be able to understand what is my purpose in this existence so that clarity of purpose is what is called wisdom so it is a combo so the wisdom uh, might be a combo of uh, this process yes so based on understanding i will have the wisdom with the wisdom now i will work out how to fulfill that goal which is there you know i as a human being has some goal that is the wisdom you know clarity clarity about the wisdom what the goal is wisdom then once i know what is my goal i will try to work out how i fulfill my goal right this detail is what is called science the science is not in the normal sense where we talk about science of material only here we will talk about science of material science of consciousness and also science of space okay so 
will have this science. If I start with right understanding, I will have the wisdom. With wisdom, I will have the right kind of science. The problem today is that that right understanding part is missing. Therefore, I am not able to decide my goal as a human being. So that wisdom is not there. I assume that everything is material. Therefore, when it comes to doing science, my science is all limited to material. Okay. So the very perception has gone wrong because the understanding is not there, the wisdom is not there. So I perceive that everything is material. Therefore, whenever I see something, I try to interpret it as material. Even if the human being has consciousness, I am not observing it, I am not seeing it. I mean, for example, you, you yourself can see, what did you think about yourself? As body or as body and self? Yeah. Because that perception was there, that perspective was already there, that what is human being? After all, material. And if it is all material, then I only see the body. Right? Therefore, what is the need of the human being? Physical facility. Isn't it? If human being is just body, what is the need? Physical facility. Like that has happened, you know. And the whole of education today is based on that kind of perception, that kind of perspective. What we are trying to do is now develop a wider perspective, you know. And rather a holistic perspective of the human existence and the existence as a whole and the placement of human being in that larger perspective. Yeah, need two things. One, right understanding, which means understanding of the whole existence, including myself. And resolution, that is right feeling and right thought. This is what is required for me as a human being to ensure continuity of happiness for myself. And what is resolution? If you look at that, these are the nine components. Now it has become very big, you know. These nine components, one is the right understanding. The second is the wisdom, which is identification of human goal. Third is the science, that is how to fulfill human goal. Then the right behavior, the work, the participation in the larger order. And this ultimately must lead to undivided human society and universal human order. And this put together should lead to human tradition in which human goal is fulfilled. So I have clarity about all this. What do you think? Do you need clarity about all this? Some of them are unnecessary. See, all this we want, you know. So at least we should have the clarity about them. Yeah, think over it. And ultimately, in that human tradition, this wisdom, the human goal should be able to fulfill generation after generation. So it has to be congruence, right, with the human goal. The human goal should be fulfilled in this human tradition, generation after generation. What do you think? All this clarity is required, not required? Think over it, okay? We will break for tea and come back. There your mobiles are in silent mode. Kannan? Eh? Feedback. If there is any question on what we have just uh, placed before the T. So three statements we made. 
the basic human desire is for continuity of happiness which is the need of the self and this need of the self of continuous happiness is fulfilled by right understanding right feeling and right thought which are the activity of the self and this right feeling and right thought is what we are calling as resolution then we are saying that resolution means having clarity about all this <laughs> nine things clarity about what is right understanding about the wisdom about the science wisdom means identification of human goal so what is my goal as a human being what i have to achieve what i do not have to achieve right as a human being once i know what i have to achieve as human being what is my human goal then science is trying to work out how to fulfill the human goal that detail is called science then once i have decided how to ensure fulfillment of human goal my behavior with human being will depend upon that my work with rest of nature will depend upon that and my participation in the larger order starting from family to society to nature will depend upon that so i must have clarity about the human behavior and human behavior has to do with my behavior with other human being then work has to do with my work with rest of nature and participation in the larger has to do with my participation in the larger order starting from family to society to nature and ultimately the entire existence then if i do this human behavior work and participation then it will lead to a human society human society means people human beings are living together with fulfillment in relationship right and human order means the human being are living in harmony with human being as well as the entire nature right that is what we want right we want to live in a fulfillment fulfilling relationship with other human being and we also want to be in harmony with the entire nature so living in harmony in relationship with other human being is what is human society or the in undivided society and living in harmony with the entire nature is what is human order so i must have clarity about this and this human so- the undivided society and human order ultimately will lead to human tradition in which human goal is ensured generation after generation so all this clarity i need to have if i have all this clarity in me then i have the right feeling right thought in me with that i am in a state of harmony and happiness within now uh, my offer is that if you look at this what do you find are you able to see this in yourself or there are any question which i have to respond yes abhaya is the science which we have your thoughts within me how to fulfill this human goal the human goal is to be a harmonious society the harmonious uh, world uh and understanding the whole existence and the science is how do i how do i is is it that is that thoughts by you yeah so how to fulfill human goal in fact if you see what is thought thought is essentially working out the details of how to live right how to be the detailing is thought so science is basically the thought of how to live with this nature in this nature in this existence so that 
it leads to the fulfillment of human goal. So basically, science has to do with the feeling, the right feeling and the right thought. And it will include the science of behavior, science of work and science of participation in the larger order. Today we think that world is only material, human being is equal to body, therefore our science is only related to science of work, right? science of material. But now this science will be much you know, wider than that. It will include how to live with the human being, you know, so how to fulfill with the consciousness how to live a fulfilling life with the material and also the space ultimately because we are all embedded in space. So all those three aspects will be included in it. So our science now would mean it is trying to work out how to live with this whole existence which includes material, consciousness and space. The including of both the heterogeneous and the homogeneous are, uh, I mean, the heterogeneous of uh, human behavior and the homogeneous of human behavior in a larger manner uh, that equal to the complex nature and complexity of uh, human behavior that we observed and uh, slowly moved on to the uh, universal human order in the sense when we just arrived the conclusion from the 3.6, we have to apply in a larger order of 3.8. Is this, is this uh, right, sir? <clears throat> what is being said is that 3.6 is my participation. 3.8 is the outcome. 3.8 is the outcome of my participation in the larger order, that is 3.6. So 3.6 tells what I have to do in my family, in society, in nature says that if I participate in this order in a proper manner, how that order would look like, human order will look. So I have to fix my front order. So before uh, arriving that a universal uh, human order. Right. So I have to work out my participation in the family. Yes. My participation in the village, in the society, ultimately in the entire nature. All those are 3.6. What ultimately it will result into is that human order, 3.8. <coughs> behavior means my interaction with other human being. That is behavior, right? When you look at the behavior, what is of importance is the feeling. So when I am interacting with you, what is important? The feeling that I have for you. Right? So behavior has to do with my relationship with other human beings. And the important thing there is the feeling. When you say work, it is my relationship with the rest of nature. Okay? Cleaning my room, for example, right? Producing something, right? Washing my clothes. All these are work, where I am fulfilling my relationship with the rest of nature. Now, what is this participation in the larger order? Participation in the larger order is maintaining what I have to do in the family, for example. Family is an order, right? What do I have to do in the family to ensure the order of the family? So one thing is, I have to ensure the right kind of education and sanskar for the children. Right? I have to ensure nurturing and protection of the children. All these are the participation. In that participation, I will need to do behavior, I will need to do work and need to do something more than that. Okay. For example, here, you know, when I am interacting with you, I am behaving with you, you know, it's a matter of behavior, okay? But in order to make this interaction meaningful and successful, 
so much of arrangement is done. Isn't it? So, work is, if you are cleaning the floor and all this is work, but making this whole arrangement so that this education can take place. It includes behavior, it includes work and it is more than that. So all this put together is called participation. Participation in the larger order. Education is one participation in the larger order where you need to do behavior, you need to do work and you need to make so many arrangements, right? Which is over and above the behavior and the work as well. Uh, Ganeshi, right understanding is in B1. Is 3.2 to 3.4 or 3.6 in B2? No. 3.2 is in B1, which is guiding now the science. Science is B2. Science is B2. Behavior is outside now. B3, B4. Ah, okay. okay, okay. So, we do that. <coughs> yeah, that is B3 and B4. Behavior is B3. Work and participation is placed in B4. Can we show that? Uh, Bhaiya, ah. right feeling, if we have a right feeling, ultimately it will lead to right thought, no? Yes. If one I have a right feeling, obviously all my thoughts will be aligned with the feeling. Yeah, true. Yes. So, science, that's what I said, the science will include both the right feeling and right thought. Why no, bhaiya? In, from the uh, introductory, we were been introduced right understanding and right feeling. Understanding in self and feeling with the rest of the nature as well as the human-human relationship. That feeling itself will give the right thought. Why we need to introduce this right thought also? Because with, if I have a right feeling, obviously it will lead to right thought, na bhaiya? Yes. <coughs> Any it specific? will give to right thought, but I must talk about the right thought also because ultimately I have to express, huh. express my feeling in a proper manner. So when I am expressing that right feeling, right? I will work out the details of how to you know, express that. That how to express is what is the thought. Got it. So I must work out those. What thought? Otherwise, express? you know, I may have good feeling and I am not able to ex express. Got it, got it. Okay, bye. Okay. Yeah, so how to fulfill our goal will include this. Having right feeling and right thought. And what is the goal is decided at the level of wisdom. And one more question, Bhaiya. Uh, regarding participation in larger order. So, is that larger order only towards of our family or uh, we can include uh, our friends, colleagues and everyone? Or it will come yeah. under the human society? So, when you say family, group of family, the village, the group of village, society, ultimately the nature, all that is included in the larger order. Okay. So, so it certainly are... includes the friends, you know, okay. and colleagues and institutions. Yes. So this institution, for example, is a larger order, right? Larger than your family. So then how uh, it is different from human society? Uh... Yeah, human when you are taking everything uh, under larger order, so how we are differentiating it from uh, human society? This undivided human society is the outcome of my participation at all levels, you know, starting from family to, you know, group of family and ultimately the whole human beings. That is undivided human society. When I include the nature also, that is 
human order, universal human order. So this is the process, this behavior, work and participation. This is the achievement of it, 3.7 and 3.8. And 3.9 is the achievement of continuity of 3.87 and 3.8. So it's, it means that it is the level that we are growing yes. up, like we are extending our boundary. Extending to, extending to from, the family universe, from family to universe. To world family. <laughs> from family order to world family order, that expansion is taking place. And once we are able to expand, we are trying to ensure the continuity of it generation after generation. Because that also we want, right? We don't want that it everything good now, next day finished, or next generation finished. That is what has happened with us, you know. We had such good traditions, and now we only keep remembering them. Recently we had a meeting, somebody was telling me, you know, those were the days when things were all fine, but now, you know, things are so bad. You know. That we don't want. We want things to be good today and good tomorrow and continue as a tradition. Isn't it? So this human tradition means continuing generation after generation. And in this tradition, the human goal should be met out, you know. This human goal should be realized for every human being, isn't it? Every human being should be happy, prosperous, right? Yes. Sir, for me, now I am able to see that I have to work for 3.1 and uh, for 3.1 to take place, I have to work in 3.6 for participation. If this two are looked upon, everything other part will automatically settle down. <coughs> See, automatically means I don't have to suffer for it. Hmm. Does it mean that? If that it is meant that way, fine. It will naturally take place, huh. but it has to take place. Like the question that uh, Prajaji was asking, if I have the right thing, it will automatically to the right thought. True. But then if I have the right feeling, I will work for right thoughts, isn't it? I will work out the detail. For example, I have understanding of things, let us say. And now I want to share it with you. It will not automatically take place, right? I will work out with you. So last, you know, three days we are trying to work out the details of how to share this, you know, understanding with all of you. Lot of thought is being given, isn't it? Then we express it, then we wait for your response or reaction, right? Then we invite you to ask questions. All this is a part of the thing, thought, isn't it? I have a good feeling, good, you know, the right feeling that I must share my understanding with you. But is that enough? Or I have to work it out how to share this understanding with you. So that thought will be there or work out that thought. <coughs> Only thing is that when I am thinking about all this, Okay, it is a very natural thing to do for me. So if I have a feeling of relationship with all of you, I can work out many details of how to share this understanding with you. So I'll try one way, it works fine, it does not work another way, you know, all those details I keep working. So these thoughts are natural to happen. But I have to work them out. Uh, yeah, I have one doubt. Claire. So all this have to be worked out. 3.1 to 3.9. Okay. And it is all natural. You don't have to suffer for it. When you are doing all this, you are always in a state of harmony and happiness. 
I have one doubt. The problem today is that you do something and you are not comfortable with it, right? So you are unhappy. That is the problem. Otherwise, doing is not a problem, you know. Thinking is a problem when there are contradictions in your thought. Thinking is not a problem when there is harmony in your thought. So that harmony everywhere, you know. As long as there is harmony, you are comfortable. When there is disharmony, even for a small moment, you are in trouble, unhappy. Uh, like uh, this is common for all the human being, hmm. no, Baya? Everything. It's because it's a human target. Like uh, I know one person, uh, he, she wanted to participate in uh, larger order in all aspects in society and also family. But she is in a position she could participate in the larger order uh, only towards her family. But she wanted to in a society, she wanted to participate larger in order in other ways also. But uh, she is in a position she should not uh, participate in larger order. But uh, I am seeing other person who used to talk to me. Like uh, she, her own self wanted to participate only towards the family even though she is working. Three person, other person is, even though she wanted to participate larger in uh, uh, la, participate larger order in family, but her position is like to participate only at her workplace. There is a missing of balancing, uh, so they are unhappy with the family or with that workplace. That is happening, even though. Uh, like uh, our like their body also not supporting their self is not supporting her circumstances are not supporting so there are uh, we could see the imbalance if uh, anybody is okay or good at uh, workplace there is a lagging in the family so that way like uh, participation is uh, not fulfilled or what how to balance that yeah <coughs> First thing is that this is desirable or not desirable? That's one question. Second question is, is it possible, not possible? Okay. You understand these two questions? So first, see whether it is desirable, not desirable. It is desirable. Now the next question that you are asking, is it possible for me to participate in the larger and larger order? or there will be contradictions, right? If this is desirable, then when I am implementing it, it will work out the details. That is the meaning of right thought, the right feeling and right thought. I will work out given all my competence and given the circumstances, right? Given the resources, what I can do. That I will work out. For example, if I am teaching in this college, okay, and if I can take this understanding to the teachers and the students of this college, right, I cannot go out and you know spread it over the whole world. But if I have this clarity that this participation has to take place, then I will motivate my teachers, my students, right? And my students when they go out. They will do the rest of my work. So is that way is correct, Isn't Baya? Like she is doing through her children's, like whatever she wanted to do. She will, uh, she is used to tell me, I am telling my uh, daughter to do that. So that way she is achieving. But uh, we are talking about uh, this individual uh, thing, no? So you are seeing that the individual thing is spread towards the other people also. That yeah. way we can take. So it is not individual in isolation. We don't have individuals in isolation. We have individuals who are embedded in this whole coexistence, isn't it? And I'm trying to understand that I as an individual who is embedded in this existence, in coexistence, what is my placement in this coexistence? What is my goal in this existence? And how I can fulfill that goal? So, in a one way, I am individual. In another way, I am an individual in 
in relation with the whole existence. So I will think all this together. Okay. So for example, if I, for example, this human values thing, you know, we experimented in one college for four years with 180 students. Okay. That time it was it, it appears that it was taking a lot of time. Okay. But what we did in those four years was that we could develop the content, the process, you know, the evaluation and all those things. After four years, it became a part of the syllabus of an university, a technical university, which had 500, 550 colleges. And then it went on. Now it's part of all the professional colleges coming under AICT. Okay. So all this happens. And not that each one of us is participating everywhere. We have the clarity of it. We are working for it. I am doing some part of it. You are doing some part of it. Somebody else is doing some part of it. But that clarity is required. If clarity is there, then we can all together do this. Earlier days and all saints and all go out of the Buddha if we take, he left his uh, family and then he went out. So his participation is towards the other way. <coughs> like so in that way he is not lagging uh, towards his family or it, the, it was done by his wife. That is happening now also. Like uh, people are taking care of their workplace only but not with See, the family. If our system, this tradition does not give space for right education and sanskar to take place within the family and within the society. Then one may have to opt out of it for some time. But that is not what we are saying. What we are saying is that we can have a society, you know, human tradition, where there is enough place for right education and sanskar within the family, right? in the academic institution and in the society in general. If that is there, they don't have to go out. Eh? Ah. It will also include chemi chemistry and physics because that is the science of material. Okay. But it will also include the science of behavior. So all language and all these things will come there. Yes, Bhaiya. Uh, yes. The question which was <coughs> raised by Shanmuha Priya, ma'am. Uh, uh, the answer was desirable or not desirable, first set. So it is not always desirable. Not always. Maybe under critical conditions, it may not be. Like? Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, that is what the perception or the assumption it is from my point of view, with respect to one person, the involvement, participation in larger order. Depending on the criticality of the person, maybe for two years or three years, if a long process of treatments it has been going on, then the participation in larger order may not be desirable by her or him. I, that is I obvious. Mean, we, should, we should do it in two parts. Yeah. We want that participation to happen, but given his conditions, he cannot do it, which is fine. Okay. <clears throat> that is why we said two parts. One is desirable. Is it desirable? Is it not desirable? Number two, can he do it? Can we do it? Can we not do it? Okay. Yeah. Given all these conditions, is it possible? Not possible. Buddha, she was taking this example. For Buddha, it was not possible to get the right education and sanskar, the right education and within the family or within the kingdom. So probably he had to walk out of it. But when he had something to offer, he came back. He went around working with the people. So if we can have a system where such a thing is possible, then they don't have to go out. Isn't yeah. it? Yes. Then in that case, 
whatever that has been given as a dedication, there is a lag in that particular one for a period of time. After that, that has been taken up. Because accordingly, when we go uh, do marriage, according to my rituals, whatever may be the sort, ups and downs, both husband and wife in one mode. So we will not leave anyone under any circumstances, under any conditions. That is the way we go ahead. So uh, that fulfillment, that word, it is a contradiction. If someone goes away, uh, leaving the family and going into the other parts, then the acceptance that has been given, natural acceptance that has been given during the marriage, that is not fulfilled. It's yeah, so, but you know, the problem with the when society is not providing that condition, one has to make such kind of, you know, choice. So it is better that society provides that kind of condition. And that is what we are saying, that the society should be such that it provides the condition for getting right education and giving right education. Yes. Yes. Mike. Yeah. Till the state of bliss, right, that understanding part, I can be within and outside both. But when it comes to the super bliss, right, reaching to the state, understanding the space, I need to be with only within me. That realization is going to be happen within me. So that particular moment may be by the people around me that I got cut off from them. But I'm not cutting off myself from them. I'm basically going within me, like going with me. I'm not going away. I'm going with me. And that reminds me, Didi has a question about Buddha reminds me a story which is mentioned in Tripitika. That's a beautiful story. When Prince Siddhartha left home, he traveled outside and then he started traveling within and then he became Buddha. So after becoming Buddha, he came back to Kapilvastu, his own palace, you know, to collect the arms. So he was standing in front of his own palace. He was asking for the arms. Yashodhara came out. He recognized him as her husband, and that's a beautiful piece of conversation has happened. She asked one question to Buddha, have you performed your duty as a father towards your son? And this is the point where Buddha didn't answer to this question. The reason Buddha didn't answer to the question because the competence of Yashodhara was not being developed to understand the family for the Buddha is not the biological family no more, right? The family of the Buddha is the world family. He has reached to that level, you know, where he could have that compassion within and have that feeling of love. So it says that she followed Buddha and after 10 years, she got the answers to her own question. And then she replied to Buddha, you have not only performed your duty as a father towards your son, but you have performed duty towards everyone in this heaven, I mean, in this, on this earth. So, so what I personally believe that when reaching to the towards the state of realization, there is possibility that I may get cut off temporarily from the world outside. And that time may be one month, few more months, one year, maybe a one day, but that time will be there, that total cut off from the world outside. <coughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, by, by herself. It would have been too difficult facing up the challenges during that period of moment. Uh, the partner, he or she, taking up to the realization state and going up ahead of uh, the things. Uh, that part, one uh, in my terms, uh, that sacrification, it is to a larger order. Yeah, like. I was reading through the assignments, answering to uh, this question, Infanta this question, that part, you know, when he's moving away, could be too difficult. I read uh, Vinay, uh, like he got up, so I will tell you what he has written about his spouse. He has written about his spouse 
that whenever I go outside to conduct the workshop, I have total support from my spouse. You know, she's supporting, she's preparing my bag, she's putting the things in the bag. So that support is there. So it would depend on, like when we are living with our family, how we are living with our family, if the family members are able to see that I am doing something which is very important for myself, for the family, then definitely the support will be there. Okay. And that is what uh, I guess most of you have written in the two days assignments. It's, it's very beautiful to read those assignments, right? Uh, you have so many things to share good things about your spouse. So thank you for that assignment. What I'm saying is this, that to be in the family, right, <coughs> fulfill our responsibility in the family and at the same time think of the whole world, right, that possibility should be there. You know, we have to work out a society in which we have families where we can be in the family, fulfill our responsibility in the family and within the, while well, being in the family, I can think of the whole world. That is possible. Okay. If that possibility is not there, then there is problem. I have to decide for this or that. That was her question. Right? I am saying, we are not saying that there are contradictions among this. All these can be fulfilled together. Let us try to work out that kind of society, right? Whether it is possible, not possible is what we are going to explore. But it is desirable, there is no doubt about it. Bhaiya, um, uh, when I asked this question to Meshi a few months before, um, uh, I want to run away from the family. <laughs> then he was telling ki that your body is going away. But your desire, thoughts, expectation is traveling within you. You have that. That is continuous. And what you what you are trying to do just by going out of the family and being alone. I said, I want to get into the state of excellence. And the other question he shoot at me. What do you think? Like, uh, if there is no chaos, no nothing is next to you. Is that the place where you can excel? Or in front of you, there is so many uh, things which is trying to give you as a text case of every moment. Are you dealing with the right feeling and right understanding? Then I understand just the body is moving away. Where here with the family or even with the family, we are not connected all the time. There is a lot of disconnection with the family. No communication, not only the communication, no feeling only. See, all these are happening within me. That yes. realization was... We are in the family, we are not connected with the family. We are in the institution, we are not connected with the institution. You know? <laughs> so the question is not of running away. The question is to relate, right? To relate meaningfully to the people around me in the family, in this, you know, workplace, in the village, in this society, ultimately in the nature and the existence. We are not recommending that you ignore. Uh, how can uh, we expect that he could win this universe? We are not recommending that you ignore your family. Mm. That's very clear. Yeah. Somebody did it, we'll have to study. Yeah. What are the condition? What he thought at that time? Right? And when he got some meaningful answer, did he come back or he continued to be out? Came back. I mean, man like Buddha, at the age of 35, he had this realization and mm. he spent 45 years you know, going around and sharing his knowledge with people. And it is told that on an average, around 5,000 people were with him and half of them were the kings of that time, right, who got converted, you know. Yes. Now, just imagine managing with 5,000 people and many of them are kings, how yes. difficult it is. Yes. It is so difficult to manage people with 10 you know, members. 
right? <laughs> but this man did it, you know, for 45 years. I feel that this is matching. But I am, we are not uh, recommending that you should leave home and go like uh, Buddha. We are saying, let us create the condition in the family where such things can be done. Let us create the condition in the institution. I know. These if nine points matching to this Ashtanga Marga. If I am this institu in this institution, SRM, okay, then I should create condition in SRM where each one of us can work for this. Why run away from SRM? Yes, you are right. No, this is not Ashtang Marga, I am saying. Oh, no, just matching. Let's no, say. I mean, just, just not match it. Uh, Let us understand it, you know. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise we get into another set of troubles, you know. <laughs> Thank you. I am not recommending that you should be like Buddha. I am just studying what he did in those conditions, right? What we have to do is this. That is our recommendation. And this recommendation is not that you do start doing it. The recommendation is that look into this, explore, investigate, find out it is making sense for you or not making sense for you. If it is making sense for you, you will work for it anyway. Baya, I have one question. Actually, we will be taking this UHV2 as a semester course, three credit, uh, one semester. But uh, how can I make the students to realize within that particular period? It is not possible because we are attending so many workshops again and again. We are getting clarity and then we have to attend morning session. We need to, into that process, we need to take all the efforts. Then it is possible. It can be possible. That is the positive thing we are taking into and we are into that process. But uh, only that semester, I am I will be attached as a UHV faculty with the students, with the group of students. And uh, in first uh, SIP, I will be handling 12 hours. In 12 hours, I'll be introducing the content. And in UHV 2, I'll be taking this part previous day. That is not we are seeing now that uh, B1, B2 are there. And uh, that realization part, it's also given in that portion. But how can I make the student to take effort um, continuously and to realize and do the project? That is, if they were identification of the human goal, then they will be doing the projects, how to fulfill the human goal. That all the projects, what they will be doing, that can be in the sustainable development projects, if they are realizing it whether the time is sufficient for us to make them to understand all these things, how much effort they need to take, that is the my thought going on within me for a long time. Yeah, very genuine concern it is. What we are saying, like when you teach physics in class 9, 10th, 12th, right? How much of physics you teach? Very little, right? Not the whole of it. Yes. So somewhere it has to be introduced. Okay. And we are introducing. Number one. Number two. Once you develop this perception that you are not just the body. Right. You are coexistence of the body and the self. Then the child will not stop just at that class. It will start thinking. Right. It will start reflecting. Okay. And then, if you can understand that there is harmony in this existence and we can work for the harmony and all these things, he will continue to reflect on this. Right. And if he has to do project, now he will think of a project where he can prove this harmony, right? rather than taking a project which is going to increase the exploitation. So, all those things are going to happen, right? But slowly what will happen, what has to happen is that, for example, if you take SRM, right? If SRM is a, an institution which adopts this as a motto, you know, as the goal, then all the departments can be, you know, properly synchronized. 
like yesterday we were talking to the health people you know that can we have a detailed project to offer a holistic health system to anybody who comes to us for treatment can you know we keep saying that 95% of the disease are psychosomatic but are we giving any help in terms of you know this the psycho part or we continue to give only physical treatment if 90% 95% of them are psychosomatic then what are we doing for the health of the self so can we have a system of treatment where we are taking care of the self health of the self health of the body health of the environment can we do that and they said yes it is making sense we'll work it out right? so you can have a holistic health system here you know offer it as a course to the students offer it as a possibility to whoever is coming for treatment you have all the facilities all these things will slowly evolve i am saying then the child will understand about this coexistence of self and body and he will also practice isn't it <coughs> but it may take time which is fine first we have to have the clarity once we have the clarity then we can work for it ji i have and a question one course is not enough of course morning in morning session sir asked us to keep calm for 10 minutes and close your eyes to realize things <coughs> that time i was uh, closing my eyes and i was thinking about only four parts like family and then my uh, college workplace i could able to think all these things only like family members and families and uh, then the second one as workplace and then my about my relatives and then uh, followed by like uh, some other thing that is my improvisation my achievements like that working for my achievements like that after that it has become blank nothing is there to think about anything and uh, now when i think like this i got a question like when i go out of college i work well in the college i do my work on time everything i'll do i think that i am doing all the works right and even my superiors have good impression on me okay fine and when i go out of college there will be another person to replace me okay fine that's fine and usually so far i thought like when i am dead say for example i'm selling telling when i am dead who will be the mother for my children like no one will take care like me like that i was thinking but my realization now is even if i'm not there my people will survive like my husband will survive my children will survive it is not uh, i have a feeling of relationship with them but even though i am not available my my presence is not there they they are they will survive in this earth very well now am i in right understanding am i in right thought am i in right feeling that confusion has come that is the first point 3.1 itself i got confused now what is the state <laughs> we will look into the details of what is right understanding and what is not right understanding okay to begin with i am just saying do i need to have clarity about what is right understanding or i don't need to have that clarity right so i need to have that clarity now what is that right understanding we will go further and you know explore yeah then you will be able to you know decide whether you have the right understanding or you don't have the right understanding <laughs> okay you keep reflecting on this i thought that this whole you know 1 2 3 and 3.1 to 3.9 at least should have an impression in your mind so that we when we start working on them okay you can get back and relate okay to each one of them so these nine things if you see 3.1 3.2 3.3 this will take place in the self understanding will take place in the self the wisdom will take place in the self right the science the you know the feeling and thought will take place in the self 
3.5 and 3.6 will take place in self and body. So what I do outside as a human being will involve myself and the body. Right? And 3.7, 3.8 and 3.9 is going to take place outside. Right? Of course, I am embedded in that. Isn't it? So what I have to do at the level of self, I must have the clarity. What I have to do at the level of myself and body, I must have that clarity. And what will happen outside, you know, as a society, as a nature, that clarity I need, you know. Some people, Means. three parts, please, three parts, one is clarity about what I have to have in the self, clarity about what I have to have at the level of self and body and clarity about what has to be there outside. All these three categories of things, you know, I need to have the clarity of, okay. <laughs> Yes. Morning after I enter, um, sir was telling we should not speak to each other, as ma'am was telling right now. So, when you are tired, you sleep. But in my case, if you ask <coughs> me to sleep, I will sleep. Sleep has become a hobby for me in my life. Yeah. You just make me to sit for five minutes. You ask me not to talk, not to interact with anyone. That's all I will sleep. It may be two hours, three hours, even four hours I will sleep. Even if you wake me up, I will answer you and sleep again. Yeah. It has become a lifelong. I don't know. Somebody will say it's a God-given gift. If I go to hospital, you need to sit forever. I don't know what to do. I don't like to see mobile for 10 hour, 8 hour. It will... Eye pain, already power is also maximum. So I just see some messages, what are important. I just put it in the bag. I just imagine something, sleep will automatically come, I'll sleep. But uh, now sir gave 10 minutes time. Before that, ma'am was actually helping me in waking me up. Wake up, wake up. I don't know what happened. Nowadays, <laughs> I can't control the sleep, I don't know. Suddenly I'm falling down and sleeping. After half an hour, I'll wake up and do all the work. Yeah. This is happening. Maybe it is because of stress or I'm not caring about anything. Uh, I went to that state. I do not know. This is happening for the past uh, two years. Madam, wake me up. I said, uh, Madam, I don't know how to control the sleep. What is happening? I don't know. I said. Then sir said, 10 minutes time, you please keep on thinking. Sir said, uh, think. Uh, I don't know what happened. I went to a wonderful sleep. Fully, so many things came in the mind. But when I wake up, everything I forgot. Yeah. As that ma'am said, now nah, after you sleep and wake up, you will forget all stress, everything will go. Many dreams came. I don't know whether it came about my HOD or my husband or my family or uh, going outside for a hill station. I love to watch hill station, birds, all these things. I don't know. Everything came and it went off. Then sir said, don't talk with anyone. That is actually very difficult for me. So what I decided is not to see any of the faces. So if I see the face, only my intention mouth will go to talk. Nah. So if I don't see, so this today, first time I went and had my uh, outside um, snacks. Uh, yesterday and all I came late, last, today I went first. I had the snacks and came out. Then um, that irritation, when I replied to a mail, it came. But when I realized they are also human being, irritation calmed down. I can see that... Uh, feel of change within me and now you are telling about this nine things like from understanding to human tradition I was quoting this with a material formation actually so how beautifully a material is forming you know it's a periodic structure that too crystal structure is the wonderful structure in the world that's why we want to be like crystal material decided to form that is understanding then wisdom clarity of the structure material will get 
so i need to get clarity for what purpose i am living in this world how to fulfill the goal is signs of the bonds in the material what bonds are supposed to form then only you will get a proper structure otherwise the crystal will be wasted human being also become wasted then behavior work and participation participation in the larger order there the behavior is nothing but formation energy of a material if i if it has to form it has to make its energy negative then it has to do a work by releasing or absorbing energy and finally make the material to come to a lower energy call lower potential energy that is the work once this is done the material is not a material it is a unit cell like a human being just a form in the mother's womb we are a unit cell in 10 months only we grow no then the material will grow when it is material is growing you know it is participating in larger order that is called a super cell from a unit cell material will join together like a human being is growing in the mother's womb it becomes a super cell then universal human order that is an undivided material is formed beautifully human tradition so undivided material is nothing but the uniqueness of the material it can be a 2d 1d or 0d anything god's creation is super next the material tradition so with that property material has its own tradition that is the uniqueness of a material so like the material human being have our own uniqueness if we understand that really as you said universal human order will be there through this uhv in the entire world yeah i really loved it thank you bhaiya but i am really sorry i don't know how to control the sleep alone and i don't remember sir said think in self Uh, think what is happening what all happened also i forgot totally because of the sleep thanks thank you ma'am nice correlation between materials and human order uh, conditions perceptions and uh, everything it comes from nature now i can correlate it all existence it comes from nature reality in its completeness as it is so when we are saying right understanding it means understanding the whole existence you know the existential reality <coughs> wisdom is identification of human goal science is how to fulfill human goal behavior is with human being leading to mutual happiness work is with rest of nature the human being with rest of nature leading to mutual prosperity which means human being as well as prosperity of the rest of nature participation in the larger order is from family to world family order leading to fulfillment of human goal the undivided human society is ensuring human human relationship from family to world family the universal human order is ensuring order for fulfillment of human goal from family order to world family order the human tradition is ensuring human order in which human goal is fulfilled from generation to generation so these are some detailing you know just some definitions of these uh, things that we are using placement of these different aspects of our living recall from usb2 the total expression of human being living with realization of coexistence that is human conduct these different aspects of our living is living in this self with the body in relationship with human being and nature and ultimately the existence can be placed as shown in this slides to follow we can also relate as to what resolution has to do with clarity of all these aspects this you recall yes this is a common diagram you know which you see at the end this has to do with your understanding part right this has to do with your imagination part this has to do with your behavior work and participation point 1 that is right understanding has to do with the whole of this b1 part you know this whole thing realization of coexistence understanding of harmony 
and clarity about the relationship, about the participation in the larger order. Wisdom is having this clarity of relationship and participation in the larger order and that is the goal, that is the human goal. <coughs> Science is this part, you know, the right feeling and right thought that is working out the details of how to fulfill this relationship and harmony. Okay. 3.4 is the behavior, this is work, this is participation. This behavior ultimately leads to undivided human society, that is 3.7, which leads to this participation in the larger order leads to universal human order, 3.8. And this continuity of these two ultimately leads to human tradition, that is 3.9. And if you do all this, we will have this mutual happiness, mutual prosperity and fulfillment of human goal, that is number one. That is goal of human being of continuous happiness. So what we have been talking about in USB 2 has one to one correspondence with what we are talking about in USB 3. Only the emphasis is different, you know, the emphasis is different in this sense where we have to start working. That we will see as we go. Yeah, can you said in ESP2 and what? Hmm? Yeah? Between what we have talked about in ESP2 and what we are talking about now in ESP3. You recall this, right? This you are familiar with? Yes. And this 3.1 to 3.9 and then 1 to is what we are talking about here. 1 to 3 and 3.1 to 3.9. So look at this. It may take little time for you to correlate. And ultimately, when it comes to methodology, it is the methodology of self-exploration, which every time we have been explaining, right? So I don't have much to explain there. With this, the homework or the self-reflection is write down all your questions that you have remain that have remained unanswered after USB 2 or new questions that have come up since USB 2. If you are unhappy at this moment, examine whether it is due to lack of required physical facility or lack of fulfillment in relationship or lack of right understanding and right feeling in the self. Which one seems to be the main cause? Is the source of your happiness inside or outside? If it is outside, for example, favorable sensation or favorable feeling from others, then is there a possibility of continuity of happiness? Science is about how to fulfill human goal. Investigate into this statement in the context of present day science. So what present day science says and what we are saying here in science, right? they are same or they are different and if they are different, what is the difference? After this UHV2, uh, not in the initial workshop, after fourth, fifth workshop, um, uh, one thing I could notice is like I am receiving lot of information and uh, I feel lot of assumptions going on inside uh, because I couldn't able to see that uh, clear right understanding picture in the continuity at least. So b with this in assumptions, uh, now I feel like not expressing outside many things. Why 
because i feel very scared of fear now whatever i'm expressing outside is also my assumptions why i want to put more confusion on the current assumption which is already there but this itself also creating a problem like why are you not talking why are you not expressing why are you not doing this see like uh, now lot of confusions within me lot of uh, in search of this clarity this expression part has reduced and whenever i do this i i'm was very cautious should i talk not talk all these things are happening um until unless i am not getting this clarity within with the completeness of right understanding i feel that i'm just tra- transferring my assumptions in that way my participation <coughs> in the larger order is getting reduced what to do to that will happen because this uh, you know shifting from working within to working outside then working within and so on that will go on till we have the balance you know complete balance of working inside as well as working outside till that takes place yes this shifting will take place you know this going in you know you think i must work out myself first then you work out yourself certain things are very clear to you and you feel that it is something now you must share with others so you go and share right then you realize that certain things are still unexplored so i must pay attention to exploring them right then you explore and you find you are now better you know it with yourself then you feel like sharing you know and that will go on you know i personally would say that you have to keep yourself open to working within as well as working outside right so if i am going by an assumption and i think it is an assumption worth sharing then i may still share that assumption whether that it is an assumption for me and i am trying to explore okay but i consider it worth for you also to explore in fact when we started this uh, course there was lot of discussion among us that when we have not understood the whole thing right is it good to teach this course to the students right this was a question you know yeah and then we discussed on this in quite detail and finally we came to the conclusion that you go there as a co facilitator you know you are facilitating the process of self exploration in the students also you are yourself exploring but it is something which you know prima facie looks important useful you know to share with the other so that he can also explore so you are a co explorer with the other right so i am not just preaching but i am exploring myself and i want you also to explore because i can see that it is so meaningful for me and it can also be meaningful for you so i must share as a co explorer not as a preacher that would be the difference and our experience is that those people who have gone to teach this course in relatively much deep than those people who have not started you know sharing or teaching this course but certainly they have to keep themselves open you know they should not feel that they have understood everything and they start enforcing it on others that is not the idea but yeah sometime in that case i over evaluate myself like i understood but it is tough for me to explain the other person to understand this that is also happening by yeah yeah all this will happen <laughs> <laughs> you know this is a very long and deep process that we are talking about we could have made it very you know simple and very rigid kind of thing but very purposefully we are keeping it you know quite open you know very explorative and step wise trying to increase the depth as well as the width so that 
you continuously evolve number 1 and number 2 you are able to help the other also to evolve so you don't have to become rigid kind of you know uh, person that will not help for you to grow and it will not not also help others to grow but this will happen but yes. the feeling of disconnection is there maybe after some time come back but at some point that is there <laughs> yes it will keep coming and going because there is lot to explore within and then there is lot to do outside so the total disorganized thoughts it's like uh, tough to understand what's happening within me around me the move at the very moment i feel related to with the connecting to feeling the very next that fluctuations which i am talking about so see all these confusions were there there were more of it before and you were not aware now you are becoming aware of them some of them are sorted out some are still there now that you have become aware and you are concerned about it them you will work on them and slowly they will get sorted out but it is good to face oneself okay and when we face ourselves slowly we will work on it and we will improve when we improve our interaction with the other will also improve but lot of these fluctuations might take place in between but it is worth i would say in the subject physics or chemistry or mathematics clear cut keywords are there in case of uhv you give the freedom to answer for example mango you give the example for the tree some student think of mango or orange or apple some other give lot of ex- examples have in their mind there is no particular keywords you give the freedom in online classes also most of the student ask what is right you give four or five answer keywords selected which one is right but you have pointed out whatever thing you have to write you give the freedom to group discussion or self exploration but how to evaluate validate everything is right understanding i can but everyone evaluation is not say in case of mathematics we can say 5 plus 3 8 everyone's give the keywords 8 okay. is correct answer <laughs> but in case of uhv lot of answers there you can put the marks <coughs> <laughs> that is my doubt are <coughs> quite clearly stated only thing is that you are given the freedom to explore it is not said that we don't know human being is self or body or coexistence of self and body that kind of confusion is not there so let us be very clear about it but we are saying that don't assume it it is expected that you explore yourself and understand it is all that is being said so it is not that the answers are not definite answers are definite but we are not insisting on it that is one thing second thing is that even in physics right as you go deeper okay you would realize that things become subtler and subtler and they don't behave the same way as they behave when they are gross you know about newtonian mechanics and quantum mechanics right but you don't teach quantum mechanics okay you teach newtonian mechanics and you think that you know there is force and it works this way you push something and it will run move so we are not saying that there is no definiteness we are saying don't assume it explore and then decide for yourself 
the answers are definite. Okay, we can move on to the next this thing. And you think that lot of you know things you have understood. And when you do USB 2, <laughs> you suddenly start realizing that you have not understood many things, right? Then lot of work you do and then you feel that, okay, now you have understood so many things. Then you do USB 3 and you find that, oh, so many things you had not understood, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we have to keep taking you forward, right? In fact, you will realize that when you do USB 2, what you had understood through USB 1, now you are able to understand better. Similarly, when you do understand USB 3, lot of confusion about USB 2 and USB 1. But once you get through this USB 3, those concepts and understand them, then you can properly see, you know, what you had understood in USB 2 and 1. So all those are very sequentially placed. But for the time being, there will be a lot of commotion. So bear with that commotion, you know, that transition. Move on to this understanding human being and its expansion, particularly this right understanding, you know, what is right understanding. So we are talking about right understanding now. 3.1. So, right understanding means to see the reality as it is in its completeness. That is what is also called as knowing, right? To know means to see the reality as it is. To understand means to see the reality as it is and its completeness. And what is the meaning of this completeness, right? So, if you look at an unit, One thing to see is the form. Every unit has a form. And it also has some property. Right? For example, this has a form, right? This has some shape, some size, some density, some color. And then it has some properties. Okay. So, these are two de details of about this particular unit. Similarly, when you see a human being, right? Human being, if you look at the body, it has some shape, some size, right? So, it has some form. Then this human being has some behavior with you, right? So, some property is there. But is this all that a unit has? Today, when you look at the science, the science is mainly focusing on this, is studying about the form and is studying about the property. This works for the material world. But when it comes to human being, when it comes to the world of consciousness, this much of description is not sufficient. This much of description is not sufficient. There are three more descriptions. So this has the variety, it is changing in nature. Like if you take a tree, different trees have different form and different properties, right? If you look at human being, they have different form and different behavior. Property means behavior for case of human being, isn't it? So there is variety, they are changing, you know, these forms and properties. 
Is that all that an unit has? Or there is something more? Yeah, so there are three more things. Something more that is energy. The natural characteristics, the innateness and the coexistence. These three more descriptions are there for every unit that we see around. This natural characteristic means participation in the larger order. So every unit is in relationship with other unit, right? And they have some definite participation with others. That is one thing. Second thing is that they have some self-organization. They have some definite self-organization that is called innateness. The third one is called natural characteristics. This is called innateness. So that unit is in harmony. And third is that the unit in a unit is in coexistence. It is submerged in a space. These are three descriptions in addition to form and property. When it comes to human being, they become very important. Read the meaning. Different people are behaving differently. Right? Isn't it? Some people are behaving with a feeling of relationship. Some people are behaving with a feeling of opposition. Right? If you study the behavior, that will be your conclusion. Right? But when you ask yourself, what is your natural acceptance for feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Can you see that? So we may have feeling of opposition, we may be expressing our behavior, you know, in terms of this feeling of opposition. But what is naturally acceptable to you? The feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? So when you come to this third point, it starts making a difference. Okay? This will start making a difference for you. So I may be behaving, you know, harshly with you, but is that behavior and the feeling behind that behavior naturally acceptable to me? or not naturally acceptable to me. What is it? Not acceptable. So I must understand this natural characteristic also. So when you look at the natural characteristic of a human being, it is for relationship and not for opposition. It is for relationship and not for opposition. Similarly, if you look at the self-organization, a human being, when is he self-organized? When he has the right understanding of things or when he does not have the right understanding of things? Right? So with right understanding, with knowledge, you are self-organized, right? You want to be in harmony, right? That is true. So you want to be in harmony, but with right understanding, you are in harmony. Without right understanding, you are in confusion, right? You are in contradiction. So that is another description about the human being. And ultimately, all human beings are submerged in space. That is another level of description which is important, you know. When we go ahead, we will talk about this, you know, 
that ultimately all of us are submerged in space. We are in space, right? Presently, we are not aware of this space and we are not aware of the submergence. But is it important? Is it not important? That we will see. But we are submerged in space. These are the five levels of description of any unit. So when I am looking at a unit and I am able to see all these five aspects of a unit, then I am having the right understanding. Then I am knowing this unit in its completeness. Otherwise, I am not knowing it in its completeness. And this is interesting, you know. Like, if I study a human being in all these aspects, I will find that all human beings are good human beings. Okay. If I study only first two, then I will find that some human beings are good, some human beings are bad, mostly they are bad. Okay. That's, that is going to be the conclusion, isn't it? Yes, by Yes. At the level of natural characteristics, we are all similar. At the level of innateness, we are all similar. At the level of coexistence, all human beings are similar. Right? At the level of behavior, they may be different. At the level of their form, they may be different. Right? Yes. And today, all description, in the, you know, all discrimination that we make is on the basis of first two. And because we do not know the higher aspects of the unit, okay, we are not able to see the commonness. Right? We are not able to see this universality, you know. These are definite, they are continuous, they are universal in nature. So we are not able to see those continuity, those universality in human being. Right? So when we were asking this question, what is naturally acceptable to you? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Relationship. Is it common for all of us? Our yeah. behavior may be different. Form one. may be different. But that natural acceptance is always for relationship. Because that is the very basic design of us as human beings. So, if we can understand that, then we understand the commonness in human being. So, this feeling of relationship is something which is definite, which is continuous, which is universal in nature. Can you see this point? By have one question over here. There is a doubt. <coughs> feeling of relationship and feeling of opposition. Uh, for example, with the in-laws. So, whatever they tell, we have to go ahead with them, but we may not reflect our reflections over there. So, with the feeling of opposition within ourselves and on an outward basis, with the feeling of acceptance or relationship, we go ahead whatever it has been put up on us. So, it is in what state? <coughs> See, if you have feeling of opposition, you are uncomfortable within. Yes. You are unhappy within. Right? So, this is something which is not natural to you. Something within? Which is not natural to you. Okay. So, that is not your natural characteristic. Okay. Now, given that, what do I do? Mm. Right? That is the question then. Yes. Okay? I can't walk out of the system. Right? What we are saying is that I must understand this, that if I have the feeling, right feeling for the other, I will take care of him, mm. right? That is a natural outcome. Mm. But if I am forced to do it without that understanding, mm. then I am in trouble. Okay. So what do I do? I develop the right understanding mm. and thereby develop the right feeling. And with that right feeling, I take care of the elder, right? 
and if i am taking care of the elder with my right behavior right if he is doing something which is not right then i will create a space where i can share this with him or her okay that space will be created out of my right behavior with the other but it takes long time it will take long time yes but it is worth <laughs> yes <laughs> for her it is going to take very long time yes. <laughs> that was her expression yes <laughs> ensures harmony within you first it may still take time for the other to respond but as far as you are concerned you are immediately getting relief if you are doing otherwise that is you are having feeling of opposition and doing it then what is happening you are unhappy and if you are having opposition somehow or other it will come out so he will also get unhappy okay however hard you try not to express okay so it is better to develop this capacity in myself to have that right understanding and thereby have the right feeling and with that right feeling i take care of the elders right that will show up as my right behavior okay the other may or may not behave properly <laughs> I'm suppressing. I'm suppressing. Yeah, what I'm not saying is this. I'm not saying that you have a, you continue to have a wrong feeling and suppress. I'm not saying that. If you have the wrong feeling, go and express. I have no problem. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is that if you have the wrong feeling, you are making yourself suffer. that is my concern <coughs> <coughs> if i can see this and i can put it in order then i will have the right feeling in me and i will feel happy within with that i will behave properly now if the other person is not responding properly you know not showing proper behavior if i have to say something to him i will say with right feeling right that i have to ensure i keep taking this example that if the child is putting hand in the fire the mother will hold the child by force but when you are holding the child by force what is your feeling feeling of affection or feeling of opposition that is important because that involves your happiness or unhappiness so if i think something is important to explain i am trying to explain you right with that feeling of relationship right you may respond or you may not respond right sometime you may even react okay but i can understand that you know that i am trying to introduce certain concepts which you are not familiar with trying to introduce certain realities which you are not aware and you have not paid attention to right so it takes time for you to pay attention when you pay attention it takes time for you to you know look into it investigate into it and understand it so all that will happen you know so i am giving that time you know same thing i keep repeating 10 times because i know when i am speaking something you may be somewhere else you know right okay you are busy thinking of something else or you are busy thinking of what i said you know half an hour back or one hour back right so i keep repeating n times so at least once you hear right when you hear there are lot of questions now suddenly what is this you know okay 
then you slowly start paying attention you know understand something out of it something you don't understand you know something gets resolved something becomes more aggravated you know so all those things keep coming out you know and which is fine you know so if i understand this properly i have a feeling of relationship with you all and with that feeling of relationship and with that feeling of responsibility i am trying to place these proposals one by one trying to bring it to your notice you know helping you to draw your attention so that you can start exploring investigating into them when you are started investigating into them you have questions so i am listening to the question i am trying to respond to the questions there also i find that some of the questions can be responded immediately some of the questions cannot be responded immediately it will take time for you to explore you know so i will give some hint ask you to explore yourself you know all that process will go on and it will take time but that is not causing the unhappiness or a feeling of opposition in me i can understand all these as a process similarly similarly when i am taking care of the elder or the young ones you know i can do that all this old people and the young people with youngers you are normally very generous right the children with the elders you think they should be responsible which they are not anyway silent but it was triggering them <laughs> so how to handle such elders how to make them to understand yeah i will say two parts number one what is your feeling your feeling is okay yeah i'm okay i want a good relationship with them that's what i'm making a several attempts uh, by explaining them this is uh, right this is wrong not to do like this and all they say okay at the time but again at a certain situation same thing is hap- happening yeah so i i will respond to it in two parts one part is that what is your feeling feeling of relationship relationship then you are happy that much is settled yes yes mm. right you have mm. no problem no this has to be ensured first <laughs> 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 because if you get the feeling of opposition then you are in trouble so that you have to handle first if you are comfortable then let them take time what is the problem yeah i am expecting mutual happiness <laughs> mutual prosperity but it's not happening for a long time so they be <laughs> they may take time like these children you know the children take time no i am talking about elders no no this is what i am saying <laughs> these elders are also like children okay if they do not have the right understanding they are like children you know and if they had right understanding they will behave properly they will have the right feeling and right behavior if they are not having right behavior that means they do not have the right feeling which means they don't have the right understanding so they are also like children right so you have to be i think mostly uh, when they cross over 60 years they f- uh, have a feel of uh, insecure uh, they are uh, feeling like insecure so i think most of the problem arises because of that now who is responsible then the problem is when we are uh, when they are parents to us 
they are running for earning money because they want us to grow up well and provide everything whatever we want now we are in that situation so we couldn't able to spend time with them so but they are also, at home now <laughs> we will also have the same problem after 60 then right? <laughs> might be <laughs> so that might be a gap we don't have time to spend with them uh, so i don't know how to sort it out <laughs> that is why we are saying that we must ensure all this you know the right understanding and right feeling in us right now if you don't do this we will become trouble for others okay so these elders have become trouble for us because they have not you know worked on this <laughs> okay yeah if we have the right understanding and right feeling we are comfortable within and if they are shouting i can understand what is the problem with them right like you keep asking all kind of questions right i have no problem okay 70 people sitting asking all kind of question what is the problem no problem right <laughs> many of you don't pay attention some of you are going outside then coming back and all these are happening right i can get into the problem if i don't have the right feeling this inferiority comes because of lack of right understanding and right feeling if i have the right understanding and right feeling there is no need for inferiority i am not trying to pose myself on you and i am not getting affected by you also i am comfortable within and i am also comfortable with you what is the problem you are what you are okay yes we should have one workshop for the old people yes very necessary eh yes mike bhagya lakshmi didi and sangeeta didi yes. they have shared their experience they went to this old age house yes right and started talking to those people so they said that up you know when we talk to those people those people said don't bring money for us don't bring any gift for us but please you come and bring your children next time spend your time with us so that's what shared by sangeeta didi and bhagya lakshmi didi yesterday only right yeah bhuneshwari yeah bhuneshwari didi so that is what right that relationship is more important but most of the times we think that okay i'm giving medicines i'm giving money i have given them a nice old age house made are there people are there here you do you both don't come here you <laughs> my in laws used to tell better you leave the kids for this one month you stay there in gudu ancheri like that only but to give a hope to nancy mom and then purnima mom uh, like i thank uh, infanta mom to started uh, talking about the in laws right from uhv 1 i think thought about my in laws uhv 2 full course uh, went on by thinking about my in laws but i came to the solution like uh, now no problem with Uh, my in laws from my own self like so i resolved seriously i resolved there was a problem for last 10 years more fight since uh, we got married love marriage so there are more f- there were more fight i could not even find a solution since it is uh, involving uh, in all aspects but through ehv 1 and 2 with the right understanding in me you said no you take care of uh, your uh, in loss that uh, that came into my mind after uhv 1 and 2 or after so many discussions now for my own self i am okay like what uh, own uh, feeling i am having on them 
everything got reduced now i can able to manage that hope i got it maya what did i understand from this uhv is if nobody change you change that's all <laughs> okay no other go we can try to convince them create yeah. a program for them no this is my husband words not my words you better change over that's all <laughs> next <laughs> Next thing, I'll be keep on thinking in home. Suddenly, sometimes I become sad. I will be having some thought in my. I like to be alone. Usually, as Sir said, too much if I am alone, I will sleep. That is the negativity aspect of mine. So I'll be keep on thinking, and I will get the beautiful thoughts. It will be running. Suddenly, <coughs> my husband will come, my mother will come. Why are you so sad? Why are you sitting so sad? They will, they will ask at that time. I will forget U H V and I get irritated because that time only <laughs> beautiful thoughts will come. They will come to U H V level and I will go out of U H V level. You will not even allow me to sit silently for twenty uh, minutes. No, you keep on talking. No, <laughs> suddenly one hour if I am not talking, na they will think that something bad is happening in my health or something is happening in my mind. Then they will come and silently say, "Don't be silent too much and think too much. You will become mental." Okay. So these words they will say. So what all thoughts came? No. What all beautiful things happen in the brain? About to write, everything will go. That's all. <laughs> and next thing, now you gave a beautiful prediction of different form, different property, natural characteristics, innateness, coexistence. I had a beautiful connectivity in our day-to-day -day life. Kovil <laughs> Tiruvira, we have Chitrai Tiruvira, Ter Tiruvira, Chidambaram. We have this. Uh, Ter Chidambaram. Uh, Car festival. Uh. Different people from different nation everywhere will come together. Shape and size. Chariots. Yeah, chariots. Different property. So each and every one have will be doing one one work for that chariot to move. Otherwise, the chariot cannot move. Natural characteristics. Entire participation of all the people from full nation. Innateness. Self organized. If they are self organized in pricking that rope. And all giving same force and energy only, chariot will move. Otherwise, chariot will not move. Coexistence. All are submerged in space. That time, that instinct, when the chariot is giving the first move, all will have the only one coexistence of seeing the God. He is coming forward to bless us all. So, thank you so much for this beautiful <laughs> five level. <laughs> okay so let me uh, sum up a uh, few things so these three things the natural characteristic the innateness and the coexistence are something which are definite which have the continuity and which are universal in nature so we need to understand them we need to understand them so when we are able to see this natural characteristic the relationship that is what is called as contemplation when we are able to see the harmony the self organization it is called understanding and when we are able to see the submergence the coexistence it is called realization so if you look at the activities of b1 realization understanding and contemplation it essentially means to be able to see the relationship the harmony the coexistence to be able to see the participation the self organization and the submergence that is what is essentially called as right understanding so all this put together is right understanding when we have the right understanding we can see that universal things you know universal continuous definiteness is there when we are able to see right this natural characteristic this you know innateness and the coexistence <coughs> that is what is called right understanding and if we have this right understanding we feel assured you know assured in the self so all of you sitting here your form may be different your behavior may be different but if i understand your natural characteristic if i understand your innateness if i understand your coexistence then i can see that you are all like me right we are all similar as human being each one of us belongs to 
the human order, you know, and we are similar. That assurance in myself and assurance for you, okay, is there in me. Therefore, whatever you do, however you express yourself, I am comfortable with you. Right? Not out of your behavior, not out of your form, but out of the understanding of the fact that my natural characteristic and your natural characteristic is same. Right? I have a natural acceptance for relationship. You also have a natural acceptance for relationship. I want to understand. You also want to understand. Right? When I understand, I am self-organized. When you understand, you are also self-organized. Right? All those things are common in all of us. That clarity leads to assurance in myself and assurance in others. Right? So that clarity of this natural characteristic, the innateness and the coexistence is what is right understanding. And this right understanding leads to assurance in oneself and assurance in the other as well. This, because I can see you, you are all like me. Right? There is no difference. At some level, at the level of form, at the level of, you know, uh, property, you may seem different. Okay? But deep down, we are all same, we are all similar. Right? <coughs> eh? Yeah, the property means what is my effect on the other. So if you look at the effect of one self on the other self, it is in the form of behavior, right? I am expressing something, you know, as a behavior to the other. That behavior has some effect on the other. So the behavior is basically the property of one self with respect to the other that, self. That is where I got the doubt by you now. The behavior varies from one self to another self. That is a property. Then self doesn't have any form. Now, what is the form, shape, size? This is all in the material level. Now, since we call it as a unit, it is not material we are discussing. It's both unit. Unit means both material and consciousness. Now, what will be the shape, size, density of this uh, self? <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> That's another thing, you know, we'll have to go a little more subtle, you know. Okay, got to it, got look it. Look at the shape, size. What we have started handling is the activities of the self. Oh, God. Slowly we are able to see that this activities of the self is subtler than the activities of the body. Right? But if we start paying attention, we can see the activities of the self. Like morning when we started, you know, exercise one. What we are doing? We are observing the self by the self. And what are we observing? The activities. The activity of desire, thought, expectation, you know, the imagination as a whole. So we are trying to look at the self by way of its activity. Right? Then slowly we will develop that subtlety, that, you know, subtleness to see. And this unit of, sub, of consciousness is very subtle in nature. So when we develop that subtlety, we will be able to see the form also. But presently, if, we are not handling that. If uh, um, It will be very funny, but I feel like I could see some aura. <laughs> but is it also a form? It is a form. And in fact, what you see as aura is also a very, you know, kind of not exactly the shape of the self. You know. It is the shape of the movement of the self. Yes, got it, got it. So that is still subtle than that. Self is still subtler than that. May I have one, one question? In connection with this aura, there are so many techniques uh, the scientists have developed nowadays, uh, just like Kirlian photography. This is one of the tools which captures the aura and is it the form of energy that manifests from the self or it is something different? <coughs> Interestingly, you know, this uh, issue of energy 
rather than talking about the energy, if we start talking about activity and the energy associated with it, it will be easier to handle. Just talking about energy, you know, it becomes something very fluid, you know. When you say activity, you can see it, you know. When you say energy, it gets quite, you know, fluid and you can't see it. So we will talk about these activities, you know. So there are gross activities and there are subtle activities. So slowly we'll be able to see those subtle activities when we start paying attention. For example, this imagination is a subtle activity as compared to what is happening at the level of body. Within the imagination, there are three types of activity taking place. The desire, the thought, the expectation. Right? We are able to see that. If you say energy, it becomes very diffused. So, so that ener energy is invisible, but what is captured in the photograph, that is visible. <coughs> Based upon that photography, they are making some analysis and uh, some psychosomatic psycho, uh, diseases also they are diagnosing. That is also happening nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So what is, I mean, instead of saying energy, if I say activities are being observed, that will make it easier. Uh, that part is not there, that is missing. Yeah. See, ultimately it has to come to our end. Otherwise we talk about something which we cannot directly observe and see, then very difficult to handle. Shall we go to a break? Yeah. So, Achy. just take a minute uh, before I close. So, uh, we have already talked about this, you know, uh, if you remember, these four orders of nature, <laughs> having different natural characteristics and the innateness, okay. So that we can recall in the next uh, session and see that this innateness and the natural characteristics are same for all the units belonging to a particular order, including the human being. Human being also has some innateness and some, you know, natural characteristic which is common to all human beings. And that becomes a significant information for all of us. So, recall this. In the next session, we will connect. <coughs> Ji, thank you.